Picture this. You're floating about in the depths of space, gazing down on our blue marble of a planet. What's on top? You might think it's the North Pole, but that isn't necessarily so. The truth is, our collective belief that the North is at the top of the world doesn't have any solid scientific backing. It's just one of those things we've accepted over time. And this acceptance has a compelling history, with a dash of astrophysics, a bit of psychology, and a surprising twist. It influences how we feel about our world more than we might think. Figuring out where you are is crucial for survival, and that's true for most species, not just us humans. Similar to honeybees, for example, humans have a knack for creating mental maps of our surroundings. But where we really stand out is in our efforts to share these maps with others. We've been at it for a while now, drawing maps on anything from cave walls to computer screens. The earliest ones we found date back to 14,000 years ago. Despite this long history, it's only in the last few centuries that we've decided that the North should consistently be at the top of the map. History buffs tell us that for a long time, the North was hardly ever at the top because it symbolized darkness. The West didn't make the cut either, given that's where the sun bows out each evening. However, early Asian maps seem to defy this trend. Now, before you say it, their compasses weren't the reason they put North at the top. Early Asian compasses were actually aligned to point south, seen as a more favorable direction than the cold, dark north. But in these maps, the emperor, who resided up north, was always placed at the top, with his loyal subjects gazing upwards towards him. Looking back, every culture had its own idea of what was worth looking up to, leading to varied orientations of early maps. The Egyptians preferred the east, where the sun graces us each morning. Early Arabic maps favored the south, European maps from the same era put the East at the top. So, when did everyone decide that North was the new top? You might be tempted to credit it to explorers like Columbus and Magellan who navigated by the North Star, but they didn't really see the world in that light. Columbus, for instance, saw the world with the East at the top, believing he was headed toward paradise. Mercator's 1569 world map was a game changer considering it was the first to factor in the Earth's switch to more accurate navigation. But even then, the emphasis wasn't on the North. Mercator projected the poles to infinity, considering them relatively unimportant as sailors didn't venture there often. It's possible that the choice to place North on top was simply because the Europeans, who were doing their fair share of exploring, were located in the Northern Hemisphere with a whole lot more land to cover and people to meet. For whatever reason, this North Up idea has stuck. Even when a NASA astronaut in 1972 snapped a photo of the Earth with the South at the top, it was flipped over to avoid confusion. Here's where it gets interesting. When you gaze at Earth from space, the concept of up and down loses all sense. Sure, Earth aligns with the plane of other planets in our solar system because we all share a cosmic birth story, but we could just as well flip the image or put the sun on top or bottom depending on your cosmic viewpoint. Even within the Milky Way, our solar system is tilted by about 63 degrees. If you think about it, the concepts of up, down, left, or right don't really apply in space. But how about a change of pace? Should we be open to viewing our world from a different perspective? There's some psychological evidence that our north up mentality might be skewing our perceptions of value. Most folks consider the north to be up and the south down. It even made psychologists wonder if these associations might influence how people value different places on a map. When shown a map of a made-up city, people were more likely to choose a residence in the northern part. And when asked where hypothetical people of different social status would live, they allocated the rich to the north and the less fortunate to the south. It's not too big of a leap to speculate that humans might be less bothered about what happens to regions lower than where they are on the map. But there's a simple solution. Flip the map upside down. These experiments showed that this simple action wiped out the north equals good bias. On that note, south up maps are already available online. Australians would enjoy this change, that's for sure. Whatever it is that you'd prefer at the top of your map, you would need a compass to guide you. Have you ever paused to think of its system? It is one of the oldest gadgets we've got in our survival toolkit. It's been around for centuries, serving as a beacon for adventurers, travelers, and explorers, guiding them through uncharted oceans and helping them discover new continents. Basically, compasses turned humans from stay-at-home types into 
globe-trotting nomads. Our beautiful blue planet isn't just a spinning ball in the cosmos. It also has its own magnetic field. Imagine it as a colossal magnet, humming with invisible energy. This is all thanks to Earth's core, a ball of molten iron under terrific pressure right at the center of our planet. This core, part liquid, part solid crystal, churns and swirls due to Earth's spin, creating the magnetic field that gives us our north and south poles. But here's where it gets a bit complicated. These magnetic poles don't perfectly line up with the Earth's geographic poles, the ones that the Earth spins around. They're close, sure, but not exactly in the same place. This is why the compass, which reacts to magnetic fields, doesn't point directly to what we call true north, which is the geographic north pole. Instead, it points to the magnetic north, located a bit off from the true one. But don't worry, it's close enough to get us where we need to go. Let's talk more about this true north versus magnetic north business. Remember the piece of news from September 2019, when for the first time in over 360 years, compasses at Greenwich pointed to the true north? Well, that's quite a rare occurrence. Usually compasses point towards magnetic north, which isn't a constant spot on the map. It changes and drifts over time, following shifts in the Earth's core. On the other hand, true north refers to the geographic north pole, a specific unchanging point on Earth's surface. So when you're holding a compass, it's really the magnetic north it's directing you toward, not the true north. Here's where things get even more fun. The angle between the direction of the true north and the magnetic north, as shown by the compass, is called declination. It's a fancy word for a simple concept. Now, because Earth's magnetic field isn't a simple, straightforward thing, it has its wobbles and dips. The declination isn't the same everywhere. It varies from place to place. Also, Here's what it's made of. It has this tiny needle that's made from a metal that's been magnetized. Iron's a common one. They set this needle on a little pointy thing, or pivot, and let it float in some kind of liquid, often it's mineral oil, or something similar. This lets the needle spin around and dance with the Earth's magnetic field. When you hold your compass flat in your hand, the needle settles down and points to magnetic north. Now, look at your compass and you'll notice these small markings. They're known as degrees, and here's the fun bit. The needle's red end always points north, and the white or black end always points south. That's your compass's north-south dance. Plus, there's often an arrow on the compass case, right at the top. That's your orientation arrow. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.